Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for my very first Scarlet and Violet battle video, although it's the 40th one, uh, if you include Sword and Shield. Um, today I'm bringing you the team that I brought to the Orlando Regionals, um, where I also got this guy. Absolutely huge. Big sprig. Say hello. Alright. Uh, yeah. So it's a Palafin Rain team for Series 2. Um, I ended with a 6-4 record uh, at the Regional. Um, which is pretty solid, um, better than I did San Diego, but uh, it's a little frustrating because I was at 6-2 at one point um, and then lost lost the decider of a set to a five-turn freeze, which was <laughs> very unfortunate, but um, it is what it is, and I did hit a lot of hydro pumps, so uh, maybe that's just luck evening out. Anyway, I think it's a really solid team, um, and I wanted to just go over it before we hit the ladder. Um, now, with that said, if you're just interested in the battles, uh, there should be timestamps uh, below so you just skip straight ahead, so absolutely feel free. Um, anyway, so for those of you who are still left here to nerd out about uh, spreads with me, uh, let's start with Palafin. Uh, there's nothing fancy on the spread, we're just uh, going max, max adamant. Um, I did originally try for some bulk, but nothing was really relevant enough to give up outspeeding Timid Goldengo or Adamant Annihilate. Um, we're running Jet Punch and Wave Crash to have a choice between really big damage and priority. Um, we have Haze to stop Dondozo, and it also comes in very handy to reset our Goldengo's Make It Raindrops. And then there's Protect, because it's just really valuable to be able to call your opponent's Protects um, while you're pressuring them with Jet Punch, uh, in an endgame particularly. Um, we're going with a Grass Terra-type in order to improve our matchup uh, into Iron Hands and Sandy Shocks. Um, and it also allows us to ignore Amoongus, so uh, all of that is very very valuable um so moving on we have pelipper um it's just the most common bulky spread notably it takes a moon blast from specs fluttermane while hitting a physically defensive breakpoint um we also outspeed mousehold while tailwind is up um, you may choose to go a little faster for um, more relevant calcs but um i really found that the bulk was quite helpful here uh, in getting tailwind up it is probably the weakest link on the team because so many paradox mons like bundle and hands annihilate it to be honest but the combination of rain a ground immunity and wide guard um on this team give it a lot of utility and it definitely pulled its weight to a good degree um so we're running a steel terra type here because that allows us to um take a hit from iron bundle and still set tailwind um and we have safety goggles to be another comfortable switch in for Amoongus, as well as just being able to hurricane in its face because we generally can't oko it so being able to just sit there and kill the Amoongus in two hits is quite nice um Iron Hands is our bulky Assault Vest pivot. Um, it's running quite a bit of speed. This allows it to win the Fake Out Wars against other Iron Hands, and it also outspeeds any Arcanine while we're under Pelipper's Tailwind. So um, that's quite helpful if we want to Vault Switch out uh, before we get burned with a Will-O-Wisp. Um, it, it has enough special bulk to live a Specs Fluttermain Moonblast uh, you know, while it's super effective and not Terrid, which is wild. Um, and uh, we also, on the physical side, live a Terra Ground Earthquake from Garchomp, uh, again, when that's super effective, um, or a Headlong Rush from Great Tusk. It's just absolutely wild bulk on this thing, and uh, while it does do good damage, it hits the highest adamant breakpoint, so it hits really hard and uh, sustains itself with Train Punch. Just the purpose of swapping in, taking a bunch of damage, and then pivoting back out with Vault Switch uh, to get my more frail, powerful mons on the field. Um, absolutely invaluable. I, I think it might be the best mod of the, of the format. Um, like Palafin, we're running a Grass Terra type to deal with the Moongus and to resist the ground attacks that we're weak to here. Um, so then Goldengo. Um, it's our only special attacker on the team, which is notable, but um, it is one of the best special attackers in the format, um, maybe even by a wide margin. I, I think it's just fantastic. Um, we're running max speed Timid um, on, and enough HP such that we take a Timid Fluttermane's Shadow Ball um, so we can revenge kill. Uh, and then the rest in special attack. Um, the set itself is very simple with just Life Orb, Dual Stab, Nasty Plot, and Protect, along with Steel Terra to boost Make It Rain even further and also you know, get rid of those uh, Ghost and Dark weaknesses. Um, but having the ability to set up Goldengo um, with Nasty Plot, as well as having access to Protect, it just really fits well with this team that just wants to be switching and pivoting so much with uh, U turn, Vault Switch, and then just Palafin wanting to switch out as quickly as it can. Um, and then it also has the very nice synergy with uh, Pelipper. Um, the rain protects it from fire attacks, and Wide Guard uh, keeps it safe from Snarl. Um, and Pelipper is just a great uh, flying type switch in since we're weak to those ground types and can't tear away from that since we are doubling down on steel. Uh, then Amoongus. So Amoongus is kind of just glue in this team, but it's really valuable. Um, it provides sleep and redirection as, as it generally does, and healing via Pollen Puff. It's just 
really useful in both the Trick Room and Dondozo matchups. Um, Terra Dark allows us to ignore its expanding force and take neutral damage from Armor Cannon, which we further weaken with uh, the rain from Pal uh, Pelipper. We're running a physically defensive set, um, and this is for the Dondozo matchup specifically. It allows us to take less than 50% from a plus two Dondozo wave crash, um, which is really important uh, if we want to keep uh, Palafin topped up on HP. Palafin needs to uh, tank hits from that Dondozo while it clicks Haze and then proceeds to click Not Very Effective Wave Crash uh, after we've removed the boosts, um, where you absolutely will win that fight within a few turns, but you want to keep it properly healed from its own recoil and then time things such that you can spore the Tatsugiri as you kill the Dondozo. Um, then finally, we have HP optimized for Citrus Berry here, um, and that item is just... <laughs> It's so nice. Um, I didn't really miss Rocky Helmet at all, and the uh, the healing you get from Citrus Plus for Generator is absolutely wild. You can swap in, take more than ha half your health, heal up with the berry, and then heal even further when you just swap right back out again and have Amoongus available to pressure and redirect once again. Um, yeah, great Mon, great item. And finally, we have the basic Focus Sash Males Karata. Um, this was the hardest slot for me to choose, and I was changing it up until the very last night. I think I locked in at like 1 a.m. before the tournament. Um, I needed something besides Amoongus to help with Mouse Ape and Trick Room matchups because so many Armor Rouge and Deity pairs were teching Grass Terra or Safety Goggles on the Indeedy, um, and this just fit the bill perfectly there. Um, U-Turn is great because they had often Terra Grass in fear of getting hit with Knockoff, and then that would allow me to still deal really big damage um, while pivoting into Pelipper and setting up with Goldango in the meantime. Um, as for Mouse Ape, we have the ability to just Jet Punch with zero form Palafin and then do a Terra Grass Flower Trick. We double that into the Mouse Hold. Um, in doing so, we are no longer weak to the Drain Punch from, uh, from Annihil Ape, and we deny them the ability to get their beat up boosts, um, which is really nice. Uh, it, it helps the matchup a lot when you threaten that, um, because otherwise just them having that base 200 plus Rage Fist is borderline impossible to stop. Um, but yeah, that is just about everything. So um, let's take this team out for one last spin on the Series 2 Battle Stadium ladder before I shelve it for Knoxville. Okay, for our very first matchup of Scarlet and Violet, we have a pretty interesting team here. Um, Talonflame and uh, Sandy Shocks is uh, somewhat uncommon too, but I think it's quite a sleeper. Um, I do like Goldengo despite the Sandy Shocks though, um, along with Palafin, uh, we just do a lot of damage. Uh, because Sandy Shocks puts on so much pressure, I want to put Pelipper in the back um, so that we have that nice switch into Earth Power. Uh, and then for the final slot, uh, this is kind of rough. Um, both Meow and Hands could definitely do things in this matchup, but I think I like Amoongus just for the redirection. Um, if we can get Goldengo properly positioned, then uh, being able to Rage Powder away Earth Power is while we just click buttons pretty much uh, can be really valuable. We lock it in. Now the Indeedee in the back does give me a little bit of concern. I have to be really careful about that. Um, I don't want to click Jet Punch until I have confirmed that uh, that they don't have it as a, as a possible switch in. Um, Talonflame Sandy Shocks. That is maybe the worst case scenario. But the good news though is that Talonflame is uh, not grounded. Uh, and so unless they Terra um, and swap in Ndidi, um, they are really vulnerable to a Jet Punch, and that will synergize really well with just swapping Goldengo into Pelipper, because I think the chances of them putting Earth Power into the Goldengo slot are just really high. Um, they should outspeed even without Tailwind, um, so there's a chance that we'll get this Jet Punch without them even clicking Tailwind, but even if they do, there is nothing we can do to stop them. So uh, this is hopefully going to be a pretty good turn. We are kind of reading them here. Um, they could do a safer move and just Thunderbolt the... Uh, <laughs> The Goldango, but um, nice, just Tailwind. All right, not the not the end of the world. We don't really mind them having speed control anyway. Um, jet Punch comes out, dead Talon Flame, fantastic. Okay, so that is our first KO of Scarlet and Violet. Um, now what are they doing with the Sandy Shocks? Earth Power, oh, awesome. Okay, yeah, that is a great turn one read. Um, so let's see what they're building bringing out now. The only problem with this is that we still have our baby Palafin out on the field. And Titar. Okay, yeah, I really <laughs> I don't love this. We were ahead an entire Mon, and yet uh, our positioning is really bad. I think we need to double switch, because we want Weather Control and we want Palafin out, right? So, um, yeah, Goldie into the Pelipper slot and Amoongus into the Palafin slot seems right. 
Um, they definitely won't Earth Power into Pelipper, and if they go for an electric move into uh, into Palafin, then Amunga should eat that up just nicely. And in doing this, yeah, we'll we'll hopefully retain weather control here, which um, can be quite helpful. We've been really switch heavy. Three of them in two turns. Um, and they're terraing. Who is it going to be? Okay, Sandy Shocks. Um, and it's grass. I actually love this. It means that they have... Uh, a lot of them run Ice Terra, which is a little scary for my uh, my Palafin when it goes grass type. But uh, now I'm pretty sure we're going to wall them if we can Terra. And what are they putting this grass Terra Blast into? Is it Amoongus? Yeah, it was the Palafin slot. So that makes a lot of sense. But um, we eat that even better than we would have an electric attack. And Rock Slide, which is not bad at all. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we're in a really good position now. Um, now that said, they uh, once again threaten the Earth Power into Goldie. Um, so this might be really obvious. They could just cover it with a Thunderbolt again, but I think we should just go for that switch. Um, I'd like to preserve Goldengo for the end game if we can, because Titar, um, we'll just win the, the match against Titar in that case. Um, so we can swap it into Pelipper, get Weather Control back, and then just put a Spore into Titar. Um, nothing actually threatens Amoongus here, uh, short of a Rock Slide flinch, so, um, yeah, I think I like this a lot. And they do just go for the Thunderbolt. Okay, I mean, that, that, that's fair enough. We, It's kind of a fool me once scenario, right? Um, that's 100% that's the safer play. It would still do really good damage under Goldie. Um, and they go for the single target Rock Slide with T-Tar. Um, but this is what I was talking about in the uh, the team preview, though. We proc the Citrus Berry. If we swap out, Amoongus is going to be at you know 75% health despite that. And we didn't flinch, which is huge. So Spore goes into T-Tar. That thing's useless uh, for at least another turn. And at this point, we bring out Palafin because, um, yeah, that, that Sandy Shocks is threatening us a lot um, on the Goldango slot. And we can just Terra Grass the Palafin. Um, we do have to be really careful, uh, like I was saying earlier, the Ndidi is a potential danger. Um, what I like here is just Terra Grass, Wave Crash the Sandy Shocks, which should take any attack they put into us. Um, and then because of the rain and because of just how strong Palafin is and how strong Wave Crash is, um, I think we might even kill a Frail Mon like Sandy Shocks through its resistance. And then we can just Pollen Puff up our, um, our recoil damage we take. And they're actually just withdrawing Sandy Shocks. Okay, I'll take that. And it's Fluttermane. Oh, <laughs> that is not going to enjoy that. It also tells us that they do not have Indeedee, so we are free to Jet Punch from this point onwards. Um, I was worried about nothing, as it turns out. Palafin gets a nice little flower on its head, and it's going to go to town. Um, this could be Sash, so we're not necessarily getting this kill. But that was the mandatory sleep turn on T-Tarb. And let's see how much Wave Crash does. I mean, it's either to one or to zero, right? And no Sash. Okay, great. Wasn't on uh, Talonflame or, or Fluttermane. I wonder where the Sash was on this team. Hefty bit of recoil damage, recoil damage but we uh, we heal that right back up. And we're in a fantastic spot. Um, we have rain for as long as our rain lasts at this point, um, which I think is at least a few more turns. Um, what I think I like here is to Jet Punch the T-Tar. I could Wave Crash the Sandy Shocks, but there's a chance they could protect, and then T-Tar could wake up, and that's annoying. So yeah, let's just get T-Tar off the field, and then I can either protect Amoongus or swap in Goldie to trigger Regenerator. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it. They can only target one of us, after all. And they just forfeit. Okay, great. Well, really good game to my opponent, and that is a great good game to start us off. Um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, we have yet another Talonflame team here. Um, so for that reason, I think I still like the uh, the Palafin lead, but I don't think Goldengo is going to do very well into this. Um, like resisted by Rotom, it's resisted by almost everything here. Um, and if it isn't, then it takes super effective damage. So um, yeah, I don't really like Goldie for this matchup. But that's totally fine. Um, what we could do is go with Meowskarada as a partner, though. Um, I think it does well into a lot of this. It doesn't, um, there's no sand this time, so my sash will stay intact. Um, we'll keep Pelipper in the back because we still want that nice ground switch in. 
Um, and then for the fourth, um, I'm really leading Iron Hands here. Just as a bulky pivot, um, Amoongus could be good too. I, I like redirection could be nice, but uh, they have immun they have two immunities on here, and I don't know where the goggles is. Um, yeah, th th this team has a lot of answers for Amoongus, so I think Iron Hands just as as fake out pressure as a really bulky switch in uh, could be nice. Man, they're taking their time. Gurgle. What do we got on lead? Uh, okay, Talonflame, Garchomp. Well, um, honestly, I think we can go for exactly the same play. Um, it's not as clean as last time uh, with the obvious uh, Earth Power, but I think just getting rid of, like, taking him on turn one is really nice. Um, I feel like they could go for EQ here, um, and Palafin wouldn't enjoy that, but I don't think it Oko's either, because it just because it's spread. Um, and Hero Form Paladin will still put in a good deal of work just with jet punches, um, and they don't have any means to stop my uh, stop my priority move. So, I think this is still a good play. Say so this is not usual. I usually uh, end up getting Palafin out turn one um, in the majority of my games, but this is just too good of a uh, of an opportunity. Yeah, they set the tailwind, but that's another free turn one KO like that. And just rock slide, okay. I mean, Elifer doesn't appreciate it, but we're very physically bulky. Um, I'll take that turn as a win, absolutely. Okay, out comes Rotom. I am not a fan of that with two water types on the field. Um, so I absolutely need to get Palafin out of here. Um, I guess I'll swap it into Iron Hands. I, I would like to keep Meowskarada's Sash intact, but I'm really not going to enjoy this EQ either. Um, that kind of is what it is. Um, maybe it's okay to, to take the EQ damage. No, but, but I also want to keep Meowskarada in the back until their Tailwind is over. So yeah, let's just let Iron Hands be a meat shield here. Then as for Pelipper, um, I could Terra Steel to take an electric attack. But if they're just going to click Earthquake next to their Levitator, then I'd just die to that. So I think we're just sacking Pel Pelipper here. <laughs> It, uh, it did its job, which was set rain and die, um, which is less than ideal. Um, I, I think this is probably one of the weaker points of this team, is just that Pelipper doesn't do as well as this format, although this isn't really represented with this format, mind you. Um, I would have really appreciated the old Terra Grass um, that I had on this beforehand, but uh, I would have popped it to click Tailwind in that case. Yeah, EQ does not feel good here. Um, okay. So now we get Palafin out. We still need to preserve Meowth Karata. The good news is that we have fake out pressure here. It's also interesting that their Rotom went before their uh, their Garchomp um, with this Disquake combo. Um, anyway, Meowth Karata can handle Rotom later. So I think let's just fake it out. Terra Grass to withstand an EQ and then just smack it. Um, Yeah, going for Jet Punch just to avoid too much recoil here. Um, we're in rain and it'll be neutral. Um, and I don't think we'd... I'm not sure we'd Oko with Wave Crash, actually. We probably would, um, in retrospect. Maybe that was the better play. Um, just Rough Skin plus, plus an Oko's worth of recoil on Wave Crash is, is heavy. Oh, but they just go for Protect anyway. Okay, this was a bit of a wasted turn then. Um, I'm wondering if that Rotom is choice. I've seen a lot of specs discharge before. Um, that was more of a Series 1 thing, but I'm sh I don't know that this person even had any Paradox Mons, so they might just be using a Series 1 team. Um, okay, so at this point, we are in a slightly tougher spot. Um, let's see here. Let's just attempt to pivot out with Vault Switch. Like, we're probably just going to die to the EQ, but Iron Hands' job here is to be a Meat Shield, and let's just protect Palafin. Um, the ideal here is that we get have Palafin and Meowskarada out on the field at the same time um, when their Tailwind is gone. At that point, we have really solid control. 
of the matchup. Um, I predict Iron Hands is just going down, but on the off chance they swap Garchomp for whatever reason, um, this Vault Switch could be big. Oh, they're swapping Rotom, which is interesting. I mean, I, I guess that makes sense. That really makes me think it might be choice. Although neither neither Hydro Pump nor nor Discharge would would do good damage into Grass Palafin, so maybe not. Okay, just the EQ uh, next to a Hydreigon. That is trouble, actually, since it uh, the Dragon type resists my uh, my Palafin and Flower Trick. But we have U-Turn on Meowth so this should be okay. Um, goodbye, Iron Hands. You took two really big, super effective hits. Uh, I guess that's that's good enough. Um, I promise it did much more for me in Orlando. Um, we haven't fought any bundles so far. Okay, now we're down to our last two, um, but I think we're in an okay position. Garchomp feels like it's really vulnerable here, and I feel like a protect on that is pretty obvious. And we just need Hydreigon gone. It's very scary. So I think just U-Turn plus Jet Punch is the play. Um, it's almost certainly faster than Palafin, unless it's playing a very slow set. So we're going to have to go with Jet Punch, but in the rain, that should do Heavy Chip. And then U-Turn super effective, so I'm hoping that those two together are enough to uh, to get the kill. Oh, they're thinking about this one. No protects. That would have been nice if they protected Garchomp, but uh, I guess I'll take it because my double is going to work here. Yeah, all right, perfect. Yeah, that Jet Punch did so much despite it being a resisted hit. That's actually insane. Like, Hydreigon's not a frail mon either. Um, okay, just Rock Slide. Oh, we'll take that. The Sash is gone, but that's okay. Um, Rain is now also gone, which is a bit of a problem. But yeah, here comes the Rotom, um, and my opponent also hasn't burned Terra yet, is the thing. Um, and I, and because I suspect they're choice on Rotom, I kind of like the idea of just double protecting here um, to scout. If they protect on Garchomp, even better. Um, but let's just see what they do here. I, I have to suspect they're gonna t they're gonna pop Terra somewhere. That Rotom is very vulnerable to Flower Trick right now. Yep, there's the Terra. All right, let's see where they're putting it. Okay, it isn't a Rotom, and it is Ghost-type. Okay, um, I think I'm okay with that, though, because we just have knockoff on Meowth Grotto. They were trying to catch a Flower Trick with that, um, which is totally fair. They, they're at, uh, I, I think they're at full or very close, so, like, they would have taken a Flower Trick if it's just neutral. But, yeah, we have the Double Protect. That's amazing. Um, this is a really useful technique if you... Um, are scared about your opponent's Terra, um, like your opponent's doing a defensive Terra into you, just double protect can uh, can bait that kind of thing out very well. Um, granted, you then make it a lot easier for your opponent to predict you the next turn, but um, it is what it is. And they're just going for the Disquake combo again. Um, awesome. Okay, so let's, uh, let's knock off the Rotom. And then we can do Wave Crash. I guess into the Rotom slot, too. Um, just in case we don't kill it, because that's the real danger here. Um, Meowth can handle Garchomp pretty pretty well. Knock off, one hit KO. Fantastic. OK, so this Wave Crash is going to go into Garchomp. Um, also interested to see the speed tiers. Um, that Rotom was specs, which means it should be slower. Like, if, if Garchomp was slower than it, then it should also be slower than Palafin. This was a very bulky set. I have seen that before. Um, this is going to be a lot of recoil, too. Rough Skin and Wave Crash. Uh -huh. And then, but they just click EQ, so awesome. All right, yeah, Meowth should take that. Palafin won't, but that's okay. Um, now we can just finish it off with Flower Trick in the last turn. Click our buttons. We're good. Could click anything, actually. Um, really good game to my opponent. I'm glad Meowth Garada got to shine here. Um, and uh, let's do one more game. Okay, for our final game, we are up against a Japanese player with um, a much more standard Series 2 team. 
and I really just like my standard game plan for this, um, that I, I use this a lot in Orlando. We go Palafin Goldango to put on a lot of pressure, Iron Hands in the back as a bulky switch-in um, for Palafin, um, and then for the final slot, it's kind of hard to say. Um, I do really like having the rain to, to boost Palafin, but there's definitely a case to be made for Amoongus too. Um, I think let's just do it though, because if we manage to get a Tailwind up, then that'll be absolutely massive with Goldengo um, into their into their bundle. Yeah, because uh, Iron Hands is very good into bundle, but they have uh, checks for that, um, particularly Arcanine. And uh, and follow me with Indeedy too could uh, allow bundle to get a couple of Hydro Pumps off, potentially even in my own reign. Um, so yeah, we definitely need want a, uh, a second plan to take out that bundle. Love the trainer cards in this gen too. Like the uh, the actual battles themselves kind of look terrible to be honest, but uh, but the trainer card customization is top notch. Okay, and we're going bundle Hydreigon. Um, okay, so this I'm gonna go with just my auto like my kind of autopilot play. We're gonna swap Palafin out into Iron Hands. We're gonna protect Goldengo. Now the reasoning for this, at least in a best of one or a game one of a set, is that like Goldengo just puts on so much pressure to like <laughs> most of the format. To be honest, it's just that strong, especially if it Terra's and mine has Life Orb. So um, generally turn one, they'll think the Palafin puts on no pressure. Um, I'm going to focus down this thing that actually does threaten me. Um, and so protecting Goldengo and swapping into Iron Hands, who A, can take a hit if you're wrong, and B, has fake up pressure the following turn to help with Goldengo, um, is just really strong. I mean, game two, they might start reading that and doubling the Palafin slot, and then that's when you start to mix it up a little bit. But um, this is a, it's a pretty good turn one play, turn one game one play. Now they're terroring the Hydreigon into fire. Um, now that makes a lot of sense because they may want to resist and make it rain, but it doesn't because now Palafin is going to have an absolute field day with that. So um, I will definitely take that Terra. Um, and they just go for Icy Wind. Okay, they, they are probably going for double spread then, honestly, like Heat Wave. Um, so Iron Hands isn't going to love this, but the Protect is still the right play on Glee. I, I, I really haven't gotten to show off how, uh, how good Hands is in general. Um, Apart from just how ridiculously bulky it is. Yeah, I'm still above half health. It's it's a it's a stupid bon. Um, okay, so let's just go with the super obvious play and fake out Hydreigon and click make it rain. I know I could go for a much harder read here, but if I don't do this, then the heat wave will just nuke Goldie. Um, and I just don't want to risk that that early. Um, yeah, they're gonna swap out um, probably into something that takes it. I think they have a... What is this gonna be? Yeah, Arcanine, okay. Um, no, this is still okay, though, is the thing. Um, like, yeah, they're protecting the bundle. So, like, Make It Rain is only going to do a little bit in Arcanine, but it's still, a, like, despite it being resisted, it's still a very strong move. Fake Out did a lot more. Okay, crit, fair enough. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's Life Orb, it's base 130, it's off of Goldengo's base 130 special attack. Like, yeah, that, that's still great resisted chip for a spread move. Like, it's absolutely nuts. Um... Yeah, you can just kind of click this to get chip damage onto your opponent, and then Palafin Jet Punch picks, picks up pretty much everything, even if they Terra that uh, that Arcanine to, uh, to, re to not be weak to water anymore. We should be in a good slot. So what I like now, yeah, let's swap Iron Hands into the Pelipper. This, um, this covers for a Will-O-Wisp into that slot, and it covers for uh, a Flare Blitz into Goldie. Um, and I, I want to make it rain again. Um, do I Terra is the question. I feel like I may want to preserve it. Um... Pelipper could want the steel to set Tailwind, potentially. Um, but they're just swapping bundle though. Probably into their fire hydrogen, right? To take this again. Yeah, that makes sense. Fair enough. Um But I'm okay with this. Uh we swap in Pelipper. Yeah, this is a a pretty nice play into Arcanine, um, that I got some good use out of. Uh you Yeah. This handles the Wisp play, it also would have handled the Flare Blitz and the Goldango. So um really solid there. This Make It Rain is going to be weaker than the last one, and they both resist. So again, not amazing damage, but we are just chipping them away at this point. Like, We're going to make it so Palafin can just clean up this endgame pretty easily. If it couldn't already, to be honest, like these are both fire types, um, and Arcanine can't Terra anymore because Hydreigon's used it. So, I mean, it might be a bit of a waste, and at this point, I think we do want to um, get Goldengo out of dodge. Um, once again, just using Iron Hand, this is this... <laughs> this big damage sponge. Um, and we're gonna really hope we get Tailwind off. Um, so my Pelipper can 
generally take a Draco if it's not a boosting item. Or it, it, it can take it most of the time for Life Orb, but it absolutely won't for Specs. So, um, oh, and they called it with the Will-O-Wisp. That's so good. That's really ballsy, Will-O-Wisping into a Goldango slot. I guess the switch was kind of obvious, but that's really impressive. I, uh, and they do go for Draco, but they miss. All right, all right. That's, um, that's a bit of cheeky luck there. Um, I don't think we necessarily needed it, but having the tail, like, for Palafin, but the tailwind for Goldango is massive. Um, all right, I like this a lot. Uh, So from here, I think we risk it with Hydro Pump into the Arcanine slot, just get rid of it. Um, it would work well into either, because they're both fire now, but um, I want to Vault Switch out with hands. Um, we may just die, and we may take a Wisp, but if they do Wisp us, then they, they risk being KO'd. And we have Speed Control now. And the reason I'm doing the Vault Switch into Hydreigon is that um, it should be faster, even with Tailwind on our side than hands, but oh, they just swap it anyway. This uh, totally fine, and it's not a ground type, it's just their hands. Um, and they protect Arcanine. Yeah, that makes sense. So no KO this turn on our part, but we can position a lot better now. Now the issue is that they can start to stall out our Tailwind with Fake Out, but the good news is that Goldie in the back is Ghost type. Um, So I think we bring it out here for sure. Um, Palafin can benefit no matter what anyway. Uh, just because it has that priority. Now that said, um, Rain has been up for a little while now. Um, and Pelifer is obviously uh, very heavily threatened by this hands. So what I like doing is swapping out into my hands. It's burned, so it's kind of useless to me. And then we can Shadow Ball into uh, the Arcanine slot. We still have two more turns of Tailwind. That's good. Um, yeah, so nothing in the back that they have is going to appreciate this Shadow Ball, because Hydreigon is Terra into Fire. So, um, unless they go for a double and get it, we should be in a great spot. Um, like the absolute worst case scenario is they get a double and they attack Goldie, but that would be quite a read. I think this is a good play. They don't swap Arcanine, which I guess makes sense. The, the stuff they have in the back is more valuable to them at this point, but that's the first KO of the game. Um, let's see what their hands did. Um. Thunder Punch into the Pelipper slot. Awesome. Okay, great. So what are they bringing out now? Um, it's Bundle and Terrifier Hydreigon, if I recall. And they're bringing out the Bundle, which is actually surprising. Um, we still have one more turn of Tailwind. And uh, yeah, one more turn. So... I think we're going to make a read this game, this play, and go for Fake Out plus Shadow Ball. Um, reasoning being that it's just so obvious. Like, they have one more turn of, one more turn of not having speed control. They want to keep Bundle alive. Um, so, yeah, we'll do this. I don't know what item their uh, their hands is. Hopefully this does a decent chunk, but theirs is going to be probably just as bulky as mine, unless it's not AV. And yeah, wow. That is Stab. That's Life Orb. That's off of Goldango's crazy special attack. Like, that, that's, that's really nuts. Um... And the rain's gone, but that's 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 fine. We are uh, we are in a pretty solid position here. Um, so from here, I think I just like double attacking. I think both my mons probably die to a hydro pump from this range, but my hands is really fast, so it should outspeed theirs, and we'll manage to hit their bundle one way or another. Just protected. So again, unless they go for a double, we should be in solid position. You go for the Hydro Pump into Goldie, but, but it lives. That bulky spread is really coming in handy. Um, nice, make it rain. And it was Sash, so um, that's uh, that's really good. I mean, granted, if we had just gotten it down to Sash, then Palafin's Jet Punch would be would be great. Um, and amusingly, uh, so we're going to Drain Punch here. Let's see if we're faster. Um, I think we should be. Nice, yeah. Uh, had, it, had it been Iron Hands who was the only one who got to attack. Even though we're burned, we would have gotten a lot of healing off with the, with the Drain Punch. I have to assume they're going for a Drain Punch or a CC of their own. Yeah, it's Drain Punch. So uh, Iron Hands definitely did its job here, though. It soaked so much. Um, and unfortunately, now it goes down. So this is fine, though. We have uh, Palafin Pelipper in the back, both very healthy. 
um, and they have a Terrifier Hydreigon in their back. Um, now this would be a little more difficult since uh, since it's Iron Hands, you know, uh, into two water types. But the good news is that we have uh, Terra, Gra Terra still available to us, and Palafin can go grass. And I feel like that's going to be their target if they if they target Don Pelipper, then whatever. Um, so last time we made a read um, with the fake out, but I think this time we just go for the absolute, just most straightforward play here. We'll Jet Punch and Hurricane. Um, because we're tearing, we don't even care if they protect Hydreigon and Thunder Punch uh, Alphin. And honestly, even if they make the read and Thunder Punch the, uh, the Pelipper, like, we're still in a fine position because that... Uh, that hands puts on no offensive pressure into Palafin. We can always just wave crash it on the later turn with the chip we've done on it. And they don't even protect. Um, it might have been choice specs actually. So that, um, yeah, that miss earlier uh, on the Draco might have really mattered. But Hurricane comes out. Good bit of chip, yeah. And we even get the confusion. That's kind of insult to injury. I don't think we needed that. And Thunder Punch into the Pelican slot. Amazing. Okay. Um, I think this is just going to be a, uh, a formality at this point. Um, good game to my opponent. Uh, I really enjoyed this video. Um, I plan to put up more, but kind of just when I feel like it at this point. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, uh, good game to my opponent. Bye, everybody.